This is Reverend Eric. Today we're talking about judgment, one of our favorite conversations, our favorite topics. You hear it plenty of times, I'm sure, in your life. Don't judge me. You don't have a right to judge me. You have no right to judge me whatsoever. We've heard that plenty, plenty times. And I'm sure you've heard many others in that sense that says, you know, since you're a Christian, you know, you're not supposed to judge. He who has, without sin, cast the first stone. So judgment is real big with us. I mean, I don't know how many times I've had gotten into arguments on different uh, uh, social media outlets. I've, I've had arguments in, in personal, in, you know, at churches, uh, in, in, in social gatherings, where it's almost like, Eric, you can't do that. It sounds like you're, when you're getting after people, you can't judge them. You, you have to show them what it's like to, uh, and, and show them where, where, how Jesus did it. And we have to see, do it in love. And you have to do it in, in ways that, 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 that doesn't sound like it's harsh. Guys, let's break all this open tonight. That is almost like putting a person in timeout. We're in a world, and we're in a world where no one wants to do correction. No one wants to do reproofing. No one wants to spank their kids anymore. No one wants to, to tell somebody they're doing wrong. It's all about the political correct of how to deal with a person. What I like to understand is the fact that nobody wants to take responsibility for anything at all. They just want to be left alone and to worship how they want to see fit, which is fine. You can worship how you see fit. But where do they get this idea that you can't correct them? The fact is that now we're in Christ. That means the only person that can correct me is God. That sounds kind of familiar. That sounds like the Pharisees who didn't want to hear Jesus at all. They didn't want to, he didn't want to, they didn't want to hear anything that had to do with Jesus condemning them, even though he never condemned them, or even to the point of correcting them. They didn't want to hear anything he had to say. They wanted to come from the man upstairs. The fact that Christ walked up and said, hey, what you guys are doing is wrong. I mean, you, you guys have done all this great work with reading the Word of God, but you didn't take him in. And, and if you knew him, you would know me. But what did they kept doing? No, no, no. We got to see them signs. We got to hear from him first. That's part of where this all comes from. We have a lot of the Pharisees in our system right now because we want to see, we, we only want God to talk to us. We don't want the preachers telling us anything. We don't want the Christians to tell us anything. We don't want, you know, uh, the evangelist that's been screaming on the corner to tell us anything. We want to be in our own little private world. We want to feel all nice and comfortable and not really be have our feathers ruffled too much. Never realizing that God deals in making sure that we stay a little bit uncomfortable so we can grow and learn. Now, let's put it to rest. In Matthew 7, and, and Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1, it says, judge, and then you'll be judged. Let's explain what judge means. In this context, and there's many of the contexts in the Bible that talks about judge, what they're talking about is condemning someone, condemnation. That is what God is saying. Don't, you don't have no right to condemn another person. You don't know what is in his heart. You can't call someone's Christianity in place. You can't call their salvation in place. You can't even express, you know, oh, that person's not showing love the right way. He's not preaching love the right way. Every time you hear that nonsense, you, you, you don't have a right to do that. You can't, you can't even speak for somebody else's salvation. Matter of fact, you can't even tell another person that they're saved. Only the Holy Spirit can condemn or chasten or convict or confirm someone's salvation. That's the only person that can do it. That's it. That's, that's all. That's inside Romans as well. But let's, uh, let's take a look at what we look at when, when people say, well, don't judge me. Christians are not supposed to judge. Absolutely wrong. We, we absolutely do judge. We just don't judge in condemnation. What we do, we judge by correction. The word judgment, in, you know, dictionary-wise, is saying you know, to come to a decision when an action has to be taken place. So you're telling me when someone says, don't judge me, don't make, a, a, don't make an action toward me, don't, don't create, a pro don't, don't create a, an issue that I need to solve, don't try to solve my problem, don't try to stand in the gap for me, I can figure it out myself. What is, what is, where did all this come from? Did, did we just forget that we didn't need to preach it no more? Did we forget that reproof comes from the actual human, the human mind as well? That when our parents got after us and said, hey, don't be cross, crossing that street at this time. Clean your room up. Why are you lying to me about these? These are all corrective actions. And guess what? Our parents did it out of love. So how are you going to tell someone, don't judge me, if they loved you and they are Christian and they say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and they reach out because you're sinning, they love you. And that's what we're talking about. Now, if we go to one of my favorites, which is Galatians. It's in Galatians 6.1. He said, if you see a man, let me read this to you. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and one in spirit of meekness, considering thyself, thou also be tempted. What is he saying? 